We're back again in the lab, time to do another experiment. This time, we're gonna be looking at how much energy is locked away in the food we eat. We're gonna get some food, we're gonna get some fire, should be good. Let's go. Okay, so here's all the equipment we're gonna need for this experiment. I've got five different types of crisp. These are the foods that we're gonna use, and we're gonna liberate that chemical energy locked inside into heat energy or thermal energy, which we need to somehow measure. To do that, we're gonna be heating a boiling tube full of water. So by measuring the temperature at the start and at the end with a the thermometer, we can see just how much energy has been locked up. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna, it's gonna do. Now, obviously, all of these crisps are slightly different. So to control for that, we're gonna weigh the crisps. We're gonna look at the mass of each crisp, and then we can see how much energy is locked away per gram. In order to set the crisps on fire, we need our Bunsen burner. I've also got an extra heat proof mat so that I can set up the Bunsen burner on one heat proof mat and use the other heat proof mat for kind of burnt crisps. I've got a pen and paper ready to get down my results. I've got some tongs. This is gonna enable me to burn the crisps without burning my hands. Always quite a good idea. And also a clamp stand. We can use this to hold the tubes of water in order to heat them safely. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh each crisp so we know precisely how many grams of food that we are going to be burning. Remember to write down the numbers in the results table, otherwise it's all for nothing. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, next, I'm going to measure 20 centimetres cubed of water into each boiling tube. It's important we use the same amount because we want our test to be fair. Using the same amount, or same volume to be more precise, is an example of a control variable. This is something that we keep the same in each experiment in order for the results to make sense. I bet some of you didn't know there was a secret sink under here. You do now. I'm gonna do that for each boiling tube. So, with my goggles on, it's time to light the Bunsen burner. As always, remember, light the match before you turn on the gas. And there we have it. Okay, now it's time for our experiment proper. You can see I've got a second heat proof mat where I can keep the Bunsen burner on one and then the burning crisps and everything on this one. Very often when I see people do this experiment, they have the Bunsen burner right next to it and I'm thinking, well, how much of that heat is going into the water via the Bunsen burner and not the food? First thing is to measure the temperature of the water. I'm gonna put the thermometer in there and I'm actually just gonna leave it in there. It's important to write that down, otherwise you're not gonna actually be able to measure the temperature change. Very often forgotten this step. Okay, I see that's about 20 degrees, maybe 21 degrees. So I'm gonna write that down in my results table. I then got my crisp in the tongs I'm gonna turn it to a roaring blue flame, light the crisp, hold it underneath, and see how much heat we can get from our crisp. I'm just gonna hold there just until it's on fire. Don't wanna hold it over there longer than I need to, and therefore waste any heat energy which could be going into the water by just heating up um, thin air. You can see that this flame is orange, and you might even be able to see the, the boiling tube start to go darker in color. That's because this is an example of incomplete combustion. Not enough air, or oxygen in particular, is getting uh, to this fire, so we see it's a dirty orange colour. That's also why, when I close the air hole, it's uh, orange as opposed to open, where I'm getting loads of oxygen in, and so on. Okay, so I've got a little bit more crisp on there. I'm just gonna try and light that last bit, and try and get maximise every last drop from that crisp, might not be going for me. Uh, a little bit more. See, and this is all flame from the crisp I wouldn't have got otherwise. You can see it's actually quite black there. Okay, so when this goes out, I'm now gonna look, okay, I'm now gonna look 
at the thermometer. The temperature might still be going up. So I want to watch and see how high it goes. And as soon as it starts, as soon as it peaks out and starts to want to go down, then I'm going to write down that temperature. And I can see there, it's just creeped up a little bit more. Okay, and about there. So 42 degrees that reached. So that's it. We're going to repeat that for the other types of crisp and see how much heat energy has been transferred from the chemical energy in the crisp. Okay, I think that's it. Um, so again, we're looking to see when it doesn't want to go up anymore. And I make that 48 degrees. And from my experience, uh, the Dorito type crisps tend to be uh, very energetic. A lot of that is due to the fat that they're cooked in and it just soaks in. Unbelievable, it's actually made the water boil. Look at that. <laughs> so now we've got the problem that the water is at 100 degrees, but we're still burning. So we're not actually ever gonna be sure of how much energy was in there. Okay, I think we can officially call that. That's pretty dramatic. And funny enough, we're at 100, we're 98. Uh, degrees. Time for the more traditional Dorito. Okay, so again, we're looking to see what's it rising to. Yeah, it's already starting to go down, which makes sense at higher temperatures, but it is at 78 degrees. So there we have it five crisps burnt to see how much energy comes from our food. Now I'm gonna leave it up to you to work out which crisp has the highest amount of energy per gram. In fact, there's even a sneaky way to get an even more precise answer. Look at the packet. I think it's quite scary actually, just how much energy comes out of our food. Remember, that energy, that chemical energy locked away in the food, our cells are using to do all the processes that we, that we need it for. Except instead of doing this rapid combustion, we're doing it slowly by aerobic respiration. But still, that's a lot of energy. Until next time.